Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Martima. You guessed it, I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We're going to keep things off today with a little something from AMD. So you may recall a while back I was talking about the Ryzen 2700X Anniversary Edition as well as a Anniversary Edition of the Radeon 7, which according to the leaks was going to be red in colour on the GPU itself. And now these products have finally been officially announced by AMD, so we know the price and what you're actually getting for that price, because the rumours about it being more expensive than a normal 2700X have turned out to be true. So. Let's talk about what you actually do get. Well, as I said, the Radeon 7 does have a red shroud and gold AMD 50 packaging. And as for Ryzen, you do get a fancy AMD 50 box as well, but the CPU itself has also been signed by Lisa Su. Now, in both of these, if you purchase them from April 29th to June the 8th, 2019, you're also going to get a bunch of extra stuff as well. So you're going to get a bit of a game bundle, you're going to get a free code for World War Z, and you also get a free code for The Division 2, which also includes a Year 1 Season Pass, which gives you early access to all Year 1 episodes, 8 classified assignments and assignment rewards, Lots of some specialisations, some outfits and additional bounties and products, as well as an exclusive AMD 50 in-game armband. Now there's also an AMD 50 t-shirt and an autographed sticker, again signed by Lisa Su. So just to clarify, both the CPU itself and the sticker are signed by Lisa Su here. So just to clarify, there is a gold edition of the 2700X, and of course this is the red edition of the Radeon 7, but you also do get the sticker and all of that extra stuff if you buy other products as well. So the normal 2700X, the 27, 2600X, 2600, 2400G, uh, Radeon 7 and the gold edition of course, the Vega series, RX 590, 580 and 570. So... As we previously discussed, the 2700X Gold Edition, which is the one signed by Lisa Su and with the fancy gold box, is available for a MSRP of $329. As for the Radeon 7 Gold Edition, which again it has a red shroud, it is going to be $699 MSRP. Now, if you guys want more information, you can find it over at AMD 50, but if you are hoping for any increase in specifications, even a slight you know, boosted clock speed or something like that, unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. Now I will say the Radeon 7 in red does look rather nice, I will say they should do more cards in red, it, it just looks good, you know? And having a 2700X signed by Elisa Su is definitely something rather special. So if perhaps you don't have a Ryzen 2700X and you're kind of waiting to see what the anniversary edition was all about, well, now you know, and there's going to be a link in the description below this video where you can find out all the information I just told you as well as purchase one if you so desire. Next up, however, we have something rather interesting from the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those of you who are perhaps not in the know, there was a recent firmware update for the console 8.0.0, and at first glance, it does look like it didn't bring anything all that meaningful to the table, no major features or anything like that. However, it actually has brought something I would argue is fairly significant, a hidden boost mode which overclocks this CPU and also allows for faster load times. There have been several reports floating around the internet basically stating that on both Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, there have been improved load times on both of these games. And we are talking a difference of seconds here, but of course, even in Zelda, as much as it doesn't have that many loading screens, obviously when you fast travel, when you enter a shrine, all that sort of stuff, you know, it's always nice to have shorter load times as we saw when Bloodborne first released. Those load times were... Hmm... I feel like I read a novel in each one. Anyway, there's been reports basically saying that for loading a save file on Zelda, it went from 31 seconds to 21, fast travel went from 19 seconds to 11, and entering a shrine went from 10, 7 to sorry, 10 seconds to 7, should I say. And pretty much the same for Mario Odyssey, we are seeing improved load times for loading, travelling around, and of course entering areas and entering new levels, should I say. So, pretty nice to see, in all honesty. 
Now, most likely, this does have to be implemented on the game side, at least from the reports that I'm seeing. So far, we are seeing only this, seeing only reported, sorry, should I say, for Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey that it does switch over to a 1.7 gigahertz CPU when the game is on loading screens and then switching back to 1 gigahertz once they're done. So it literally is just to improve load times rather than trying to improve the performance of the game you know, when you're actually playing it. So, a minor thing, but I would still argue it is a quality of life improvement that, well, you can't really complain. I would definitely take shorter load times any day of the week. But, we are going to finish things up with arguably the most interesting thing here in this video. Something regarding the 10th generation 14nm Comet Lake U and 10nm Ice Lake U have actually leaked. Now, before I go any further, this information has come from Komachi of Twitter and Momomo, also on Twitter as well, whose names you should most likely be familiar with as they are pretty well known in the tech circles for leaking accurate information. So, we have details of 10th generation core, and we, again we have 14nm Comet Lake U, and 10nm as I've already said. So what we can actually glean if we look back to previous information, we are apparently going to be seeing the Comet Lake U and Ice Lake U release within just a few months of each other. We're going to be expecting to see Ice Lake U in June of this year, whereas Comet Lake U is just going to be a sort of vague-ish time of Q3 2019. So, which obviously could be up until, I believe, uh, October, if I recall correctly, but I might be slightly wrong that how each financial year works obviously depends on the company. But regardless, you are looking at only a few months difference between the two release dates. So, apparently we're going to be seeing both processor families feature 10th generation branding, even though one is going to be 14nm and one is going to be 10nm. And we're also going to be seeing a full suite of i7, i5 and i3 models. So... For the leaked SKU names, apparently for Ice Lake Year we're going to be seeing i7 1065G7, 1035G7, 1035G4, 1035G1, 1034G1, and 10005, sorry, 1005, should I say, G1. And for Comet Lake Year we're going to be seeing i7 1071U, 1051U. 10210U and 10110U. Now there could very well be more SKUs than what I just said, but for the moment those are the only ones that we have details on. So the actual flagship out of all of those SKUs that I just mentioned, and I'm sure I've gone straight out of your head because I did just say a bunch of numbers in fairness, it is going to be the i7-1065G7, which is apparently going to be a quad-core part that has a base frequency of 1.3 GHz and a boost of 3.9 on one core. And then on all four cores, we're going to be seeing a boost of 3.5. Now, there are also rumblings floating around that the reason it has the G in its name is that it's actually going to be the first Intel processor to actually have the Gen 11 GPU, which of course we have spoken awful lot about, as not only is it of course going to be in various iGPUs, but of course we are going to be seeing it in some form of discrete GPU as well. So as for the i5s, we're apparently going to be seeing clock speeds ranging from 800 to 1.2 GHz base and boost clocks from 3.6 to 3.7 depending on the SKU. Apparently there is going to be an i3 part which is going to have a dual core design and a base of 1.2 and a boost of 3.4. Now obviously we're going to be seeing con con different configurations throughout each SKU. But what about Comet Lake I hear you ask? Well, luckily for you I have some information about that as well. We have the flagship of this particular lineup and again just to remind you Comet Lake is the 14nm parts. We're going to be seeing the 10710U which is an i7, have a six core parts with a base of 1.1 gigahertz and boost of 4.6 on one core. And then across all six cores, we're going to be seeing 3.8 gigahertz. And we're also going to be seeing quad core variants across both i7 and i5, but with higher clock speeds than the six core flagship, just due to the fact they do have 15 watt TDP. The i3 10110U is going to be dual core with 2.1 GHz base and boost of 4.1 on single core and 3.7 across both cores. Now all of these details are of course rumoured, leaks, are not confirmed by Intel, you know the drill, take it with a pinch of salt etc etc. 
But what I will point out is that I would very much expect Intel to reveal exactly what's going on with both of these lineups when it comes to Computex. Will we hear anything about Intel XE? It's hard to say. We don't really know all that much about it, to be honest. It would be nice to hear it, but I'm not expecting huge amounts of information. We've, of course, learned quite a bit about the actual architecture, uh, Intel's fairly recent architecture day, but obviously we don't know all that much confirmed about Intel XE. So that would be nice, but I do think their focus is going to be on this side of things, but of course I could 110% be wrong. I'm not basing this off of any information, inside information is what I mean to say, sorry. This is just speculation. One last thing, however, before I close out the video, I just want to say that Paul will be doing a video on the desktop parts. These are, of course, all going to be notebooks, given the fact that I keep saying the words you after all of these, so isolate you and comment like you does mean notebooks, and Paul is going to be doing something on the desktop variants quite soon, so do keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.